Right, so let's try something different for a change. Tokyo Game Show hosted a special near segment, and on account of my declining sleep schedule, lack of output lately due to the next major video, and not much near content on my channel whatsoever, I think I'm gonna take this opportunity to discuss what was shown off, especially since this channel has rarely ever been relevant to something new. These videos take so much fucking time. I honestly find it cute that they dubbed it the We Have a Decent Amount of New Info special. It's cheeky, but honestly gave me a good idea of what to expect. Nothing massive, but scale down to a decent amount, and I appreciate the honesty. Between Yatsumoto, Taro, Okabe, and any other featured guests, <laughs> I found they actually had some great chemistry here. I tend to tune into these streams purely for the announcements, but these guys actually had some pretty great banter going on. On the actual content itself, the leaping quality isn't anything immediately apparent, however, the environments show off that they've gone for a far more lush and colorful approach this time around. Northern Plains always had a sort of washed out and almost yellow look to its grass and mountains. The mountains and hills themselves always seem to retain the same grassy, moss-covered style, but here they actually have snow covering the ones in the distance, which I feel gives it a nice contrast to the moss ones. Grass itself is also less of a texture and now a prominent feature, and god, I know calling grass a feature now sounds stupid as hell, but it does help define the zone more. I'll refrain from spoilers, as I know a lot of people might have started with Automata and are moving on to Replicant afterwards, but this broken building location has been given so much more debris and detail to it. It feels a lot more reminiscent to Automata's dystopian architecture in a sense, and helps bridge the gap further. The remake itself is going to be developed by Toy Logic, who I'm admittedly not familiar with. They have a fine enough track record, having helped with Smash Brothers Brawl, Kid Icarus Uprising, and Evil Within. However, their only solo developed title was Happy Wars, it seems. But from what footage they've shown, I do have some faith in them regardless. It's hard to get a good view of the village's shops on account of the hue and lighting, but it seems to be like everything else, lovingly recreated. The airy would usually have a thick, almost overpowering shade of blue fog coming through, but here, paired with the lighting, it feels far more natural and adds to the believability of the environment. The area was among my favorite environments conceptually, and I really feel they've done the vision for it justice here. Admittedly, I've never noticed the fallen skyscrapers alongside the Lost Shrine, so the prominence and redesign of them here really set the scale and scene perfectly. The odd, almost greenish hue of the snowy prologue has been accounted for and turned into a softer blue, giving it a surprisingly different atmosphere to the original, and further hiding what exactly the snow is to new players. Akiko Yoshita seems to still be doing some promotional art for the game, and Needless to say, it's as godly as per usual, despite being cropped. The amount of detail on display, even with the limited scale, only makes me more excited to see the full pieces of art here. Actually, after I wrote the script, it seems they actually did release the art, and it's everything I hoped it could be. The rendition of Salvation used here was probably the most haunting yet nostalgic aspect of this trailer, purely using Emmy Evans' vocals to carry the melody along. Frankly, I'm considering making it my alarm clock as it was such a blissful thing to wake up to. I've always been partial to Emile's theme, so I'm extremely curious to hear what that rendition will offer in the final release. I'm also pretty thankful we're getting reversible sleeve for Replicant. No offense to Kodakusuma, as I've always loved his work for both Nier and Bayonetta, and I do love both covers about equally, but I've always been a major mark for Yoshida's work and character designs, and this cover here feels more familiar, I suppose. Kazuma's work amplifies a sort of mystery and dread going on, while Yoshida's comes off as a more fantastical look, like you're seeing friends from long lost dreams again. Despite this, my favorite cover is still the Steelbook, as the art of young brother Nier captures a really special and calming energy in my eyes. It's unlike anything else. White Snow Edition looks like the first collector's edition I've seen in quite a while that's actually caught my attention. I'm not terribly interested in these pins, but the box, the artwork on display, and having physical copies of the script does have its appeals. Treating Taro's work like a proper storybook just interests me is all, given fairy tales have been a major influence for him, even down to Sino Alice. Of course, being from the West, I have only experienced a New Gestalt stub, but I found myself charmed by the voice actors and actresses' excitement for the game, and discussing and revising their roles after these past 10 years. Emil's actress is actually about as fun and cute as a boy himself, and I really love the sound of Okamoto's voice as Brother Nier. <laughs> While I do have very little experience seeing replicants, I feel he can voice Brother Nier and his glorious bare legs perfectly between his younger and older designs. The thing I've been on the edge of my seat for since the initial announcement has been the gameplay. 
play. I wasn't familiar with Toy Logic as previously mentioned, and I was kind of surprised Platinum wasn't hired on for the combat design again. However, when they said they'd be taking cues from Automata to refine the gameplay, they were dead serious. The combat is much faster, even despite them not including the dash from Automata it seems. Combat looks to be a bit weightier and heavy hitting. And of course, I haven't had hands on time with it, but there looks to be more of a delay between hits, and each hit seems to have a slower pace to it maybe. Not quite as slow as the original Gestalt and Replicant release, but a bit slower than Automata is what I'm saying. It's a bit of a happy middle ground. It makes sense as we're no longer playing as the combat trained Yorha units, but even despite this, there's a lot of flair and energy to your attacks. Starting off, we're seeing the light sword movement, prioritizing a lot of swift spin attacks it seems, apart from the spear's slower aerial attacks. Grimoire Vice seems to function much like the pods, even emulating the lock-on feature, but with his base skill still being more of a charge attack. It's been quite a while since I've played Gestalt, so I'm unsure if you're able to attack and use magic at the same time, akin to Automata, but regardless, combat seems to be more kinetic and fluid this time around. <laughs> really, it's quite hard to describe the combat system without defaulting to it's like Automata over and over again. But I feel it will have enough variety between unique weapon combos and spells to keep it distinct and nuanced. Dark Hand still seems a bit basic, but I'm sure it'll have its uses in action. Heavier sword swings especially look appealing to me, and on second glance, we might actually be seeing more of a quick step dodge feature, although I'm unsure if it's purely unique to the Spear's moveset. Regardless, the mere inclusion already means the combat devs know exactly what they're doing. If you implement a parry system to any game, you're doing God's work. While I've put a couple hours into Sino Alice, I honestly haven't had a close eye near reincarnation. At most, I've seen the journey like portions with this little girl, and have peeped on some of the leaked character designs. Especially over Twitter, I've heard it's akin to a traditional turn-based RPG, but I'm not so sure. They're keeping a lot on the download, but it seems to go from 3D exploration sections on rails to storybook sections centered on weapon stories, which then goes into the action-centric, supposed turn-based combat. I do think fleshing up weapon stories and giving them proper visuals is incredibly engaging regardless, and as someone who's played a fair amount of gacha games, rarely have any of them felt like a traditional turn-based JRPG. So I suppose I suppose my vision was a bit skewed. It'll likely be as simple as Sino Alice, which centered around pressing a weapon button to attack at a certain time and whatnot, and admittedly, they were really hellbent on not revealing much for reincarnation, so there's not terribly much to say. Although I do have high hopes for its narrative and character designs. If Sino Alice can give me a boy as cute as Pinocchio, as well as Gretel's inclusion, I'm sure I'll get some good value out of this game's cast as well. I'm gonna kill him! Beyond the bits of news on these games, there wasn't much else. There was a reveal of a statue, Automata almost hitting 5 million in sales, a preview of the Nier concert, the Yorha Boy stage play, but played by girls. <laughs> Admittedly, that'll have to do it for this video, really. I'm beyond excited to finally experience Nier Replicant firsthand with this new combat system in mind, and just how beautiful it is, which I really wasn't anticipating. And I've got a lot of curiosities about reincarnation that I'll have to study up on after this video. Overall, I'm happy to see what comes next, and I can't wait for April. Uh, also, um, let me know if you enjoyed this video format at all. It was quite fun, and the next mainline video is steadily coming along now. If you did enjoy it, I might do an extended one covering any notable Tokyo Game Show reveals, or maybe something on Devil May Cry 5, because it feels kind of weird not talking about Special Edition on the channel. But, you know, we'll see what catches my attention, or if this ends up clicking. See ya.